Welcome back. We are quick resuming back to episode five, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us today. Sorry we're a bit late. Um, my name is Deck, and I'm your, your host for the show, and I'm joined by uh, my co-host, Tim, the Technomancer. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hi. It's great to be here. <laughs> <laughs> we've I all been like a live chat show uh, yeah it's good it's so good to be here um mm. wow so we um i mean i i guess i'll just start um by asking how how your week's been really it's obviously been easter weekend tell us a bit about it yeah um yeah so i took i mean i'm pretty sure i mentioned this in the last episode but i took a couple of days off work uh this week for a nice extended bank holiday weekend so uh I've been off since Wednesday, so yeah, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and now Monday as the the day of recording this. Um, and yeah, no, it's been good. I've kind of just been chilling out. Um, not gonna lie, kind of wanted to do a bit more gaming than I ended up doing, um, even when I had the time to game, which was playing the new Outriders. Um, we can, we all know there were some server issues with the game, mm. uh, which was a, ne- a little bit annoying. Not annoying enough for me to start sending death threats to developers over Twitter and Reddit. <laughs> but uh, like but I did why see some not? People were doing. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's the way to do it. But, um, oh yeah, I mean it gets the message across. Exactly. Let's be Instead of sitting down and saying, you know, I appreciate it's Easter weekend you know, take your time or just any bit of constructive criticism. Really, you just say, I'm going to send a letter bomb to your house if you don't get these servers yeah, back up. Yeah, and I know you guys are all gathered nice and close for Easter. <laughs> exactly. So it will get everyone. <laughs> yeah, I'm a gamer. I know yeah. what multi-kills are like, all right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so what what have I been playing? Um, I mean, with, uh, with all the family sort of being over and kind of within rules, of course, um, mm-hmm. Uh, I've kind of, I went back to my Switch a little bit, so I've been playing a little bit of Slay the Spire here and there when I found a spare minute to myself on the on the shitter or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> Slay, Slay the Spire is so good, man. It's the ultimate poop game. Like I it's, stand by this. It's the ultimate poop game. Yeah. Like you know how you've got like maybe different... Hearthstone. Yeah, you know how you've got like different genres. You've got you've got your, fuck, your fucking first person shooters. You've got your RPGs, and then you've got your poop games. And Slay mm-hmm. the Spire sits comfortably. At the top, it's number one, number it one, poop game. Number one. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's a funny joke. So, um, so yeah, so yeah, I've been playing. I, I just got the joke. <laughs> That's a funny poop um, joke. <laughs> so yeah, I've been playing that, and uh, obviously I've been playing Outriders. So um, and then yeah, just loads of sort of family time. To be honest, just uh, the, the the normal cheesy Easter stuff. Um, but yeah, how, how how about yourself? How's how's your week been? How's your Easter been? Yeah, man, it's it's been nice to have the time off. Um, uh, I've really needed it, um, but yeah, it's been a bit of seeing um, seeing family because uh, for those who aren't aware, like um, the UK regulations just got lifted a bit uh, in COVID, so we can see each other. You know, obviously, um, social distancing still applies, but we can also see each other in gardens and stuff. So I went and saw my family, um, and uh, other than that, I've I know I've been harping on the show for like the last number of episodes since I think episode two maybe I, I started playing Fallout Four. Uh, and I've just finished that literally two hours before filming. Um, and I, I had a wonderful time. I, I clocked in at 32 hours or something, which I didn't think my playtime was I, that high. I feel like for a Fallout game, that's actually not bad. It's not a bad completion rate. It's, it's like in, in sort of like time time spent mm. on it. Um, yeah. I feel like most sort of playthroughs, you're probably in, in the average, but... It is pretty yeah. impressive how you can get a solid 30 hours out of it. And I, I, I bet you feel like you haven't even scraped the surface. Like, there's so much stuff you probably walked by. Oh, um, oh yeah. Like, it's crazy. I'm, yeah. I, I always, the way I play these sorts of games is always the same. Like my first like 60% of the game is like, you know, taking my time, going with the flow. And then the back 40% is just beelining the story. <laughs> because at yeah. some point, yeah. there's like, I've, I figured out, that for me, like a, a perfect length game is somewhere between like 15 and 25 hours because I always have like a dip. I always experience like um, like a little bit of a fatigue um, around like the 20, 25 hour mark. And I got it with Fallout, but only a little bit. Um, unless the game is like exquisitely, like perfectly paced. And there's only two two examples which is coming to mind, which is God of War was perfectly paced and Hellblade, which was like 15 hours maybe. And so with that, you don't really experience it. You're just kind of going along like next big 
plot point to next big plot point and the gameplay never slows down and it's always changing and um mm. but overall yeah um I, I had a really good time um for those that didn't listen for the last few weeks i've um it, this is my first that was my first fallout game um i know some people will hate me saying that for not playing new vegas mm. or three but i mean maybe if they get a frame rate boost but i mean yeah yeah uh, you've actually got a fallout game completion under your belt you're I do, yeah. One of the many gamers that have that, the ninety percent <laughs> of gamers that have that. Whatever changes, I can say the quote now. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know you what can. people mean. Yeah. Um, nice. But like I, I so I so get the appeal and I so understand now why. Because I think sometimes looking at it from the outside it kind of just looks quite brown and a bit clunky and you're like hmm. I sw- like this isn't novel but then like i get it like i get it now there's a lot of like environmental storytelling the the rpg systems are fucking cool um mm. all of the lore is very cool like I, I definitely get it now um like overall i'd probably give it like an eight um i'd maybe give it an 8.5 if i would played it in 2015 when it came out um because there were some things that were kind of outdated i think i said this last last week like the gate uh, the face animations and generally some of the textures yeah, looked quite yeah. outdated um and i fucking hated to be honest i hated the um this is kind of a bit of Bethesda thing though that like they do this weird thing with inventory management where they like go for realism over quality of life you know like oh you're over encumbered it's like oh fuck off it's like, annoying, you know, isn't it? It's so annoying. And it's, I wish they just had a better system for that. Like, for the back, like, 50% of the game, I was in my inventory every, like, 20 minutes. So, like, what do I have to throw onto the floor now? Or, like, lug to my, like, companions for them to carry it. It's just... Yeah. yeah. And the and the modding system, I feel like, is done dirty a bit as well. Because I really like it. It's really cool. But, again, like, it's hampered by this inventory system that's archaic. Like, because you have to carry around loads of shit to make the most out of it. And it's just... It kind of works against itself in some ways. Like I had to try to, I had to build like a wardrobe at one of the places that you can do all the building, just so I could tra- travel there every every now and then and just stuff like screws and like shit. In yeah, there. just stick your stuff in there. Yeah, yeah and then every now and then I just travel back and like craft. Like I put it right next to the the weapon machine so that I could just like slowly walk encumbered over to it and like craft. But yeah, I, I don't yeah. like that system. Did annoy me a bit. It like I felt like it kind of limited what that modding system could have been. But yeah, overall I had a really good time. I'm really glad I played it. Um, it gets me quite excited for whatever Edward Fallout Five could look like. So. Yeah, no, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And what, what did you think of like the sort of like uh, the leveling up and like the skill tree system and everything compared to something of Skyrim, you know, being such a Skyrim fan? Do you think it was more extensive, less, quite similar, just with a different theme or? Yeah, um, I thought it was in it. I thought it was more RPG like. Um, and I mean that in the sense that it was I think it was less creative. But it was still good. Like I still, I thought it was like you look down the skill tree, um, and it was still quite interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt like the the level progression was maybe a bit slow. I don't know. Like there there were some skills be. in there that I was like I would have loved to be able to get that, but it's like I because like you need to spec out into like the the main attributes first to even unlock the yeah. lower ones. Yeah, uh, yeah. And that was a bit of like a bummer because to start with, I like I literally I spent like the first fifteen levels just pumping into I think agility and intelligence or whatever, and and then by the time like that still wasn't enough to get to the bottom of the tree. But I understand that's for maybe late game stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. The back ten levels, to be honest, I didn't really care. Like I was just pump popping stuff into stuff, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, I think Skyrim's almost probably a bit more creative because the world and the fiction allows it a bit more but also i like and again nobody tried to nobody has tried to really replicate this i liked skyrim's approach to like you level up for doing something um yeah the using that particular thing like yeah. using one-handed weaponry using two-handed weaponry yeah, yeah that and it makes sense as well like even in it like does. real life you do something like more and you become more pro- proficient with it and more and then just yeah. better with it it kind of makes sense plus it was cool with all like the star signs and stuff like that it was a cool way mm. to like visualize the skill trees yeah um, yeah i thought it was good yeah. i thought it was good um i think it could have been better i would have liked to have seen a, a bit more stuff that was maybe a bit more out there um mm. and maybe like i said maybe a bit of a quicker progression because i saw that like when you get some of the lower skills and you get them like leveled up a bit more they kind of like changed a bit and some of the like final few ones are actually kind of cool but like you're never going to see them I don't think that like the average person is ever going to see them in their story. So yeah, yeah, for sure. 
Um, um, yeah, cool. Yeah, no, but, but you, very similar sort of opinions to me. I think overall, I think I prefer Skyrim's leveling up and statistics and all that sort of stuff and the way all the abilities and attributes are done. Um, but I kind of, I kind of prefer shooty over slashy. But um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't want to use up too much of the episode talking about uh, Fallout again. But, um, yeah. but yeah, no, good, good to hear that you had a good experience and it's nice to know that you completed a Fallout game. Yeah, it's good. So man, congrats, yeah. man. Thank you. Um, um, thank you. I'll, I'll accept my medal tomorrow. I'm, I'm definitely glad I played. Yeah. Um, so there was that uh, pull up four, and then um, I played. So this is out of absolutely nowhere, and I'll try not to spend too much time on this either. Is I saw the beta in the in the PlayStation showcase. What month are we in now? What where, what are we? April. April. Yeah. Was it in February? Yeah. PlayStation PlayStation had a little showcase in February, I think, didn't they? And I think we watched it and they showed off some stuff. They showed some new gameplay for Returnal, a couple of indie games. And in their showcase, they showed off this dodgeball game called Knockout City. And I remember mm. watching it and being like, that looks really sick. This is going to be exclusive. That sucks. Anyway, it turns out it wasn't exclusive because it just was like on the dashboard. Um, on Xbox, and I was like, oh, this is that game, cool. I'll download it, got a couple of our mates to download it as well, uh, and I was like, let's go and give it a go, and it's it's so fucking good, it's wicked, man. Um, I'm really excited for yeah. it. It, it. It comes out on May 21st. Um, if, if anybody's listening and they haven't heard of this game, Knockout City, um, it's, it's, it's essentially like um, Dodgeball, but with, you know, like street urban uh vibes to it you know you're not like in a you're not like in an arena you're in like these crazy kind of um uh zones i guess but anyway like there's so much depth to what it is it's just the main mode is essentially just 3d3 like death match um but so you start with nothing but there are so many and you pick up dodgeballs from around the place and but there are so many little mechanics that make it just a really interesting game so you can mm. you firstly you've got to get a dodgeball uh, and which are littered around the map and they respawn on a timer or whatever. Um, you can toss the balls, you can hold them and charge them up and then throw them so they go quicker. And then obviously as a, if it's coming your way, you can catch it and you've got to time it right to catch it. So those yeah. are like the basic mechanics. In between all of that, you've got a dash, which can also second as, a, as like a shoulder barge. If you go into someone, you can knock the ball out of their hand. Um, you've got, um, they call them trick shots, but they're essentially curveballs. Um, and they double as double jumps. So you can use these to get a bit more high, but also you can like spin horizontally to like curve the ball around objects, like if they're taking cover, or you can spin like vertically to like get it over the top of cover, like if they're hiding like behind a bush or a bench or whatever. Sounds um, awesome. And it's really cool because it's not only that, but you can like, it, it takes pace off the ball. So if someone, if you're, if you're reading someone, and you feel like they're about to try and catch it, you can do a curveball and it makes it reach them a bit slower. Yeah, it so throws it can, like, off their, their rhythm. Yeah. Yeah, 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 so then, so on top of that, you can also fake. Like when you're holding the ball, you can click the right stick and you can do a fake throw. And so you can wait, yeah. you can try and bait them into a catch and then obviously you just chuck it at their head and knock them out. Um, mm. So you've got all of these mechanics and then you've also got things like the balls charge up. So like if you do a perfect catch, the ball charge, you, when you, if you throw it back, it goes quicker. And if they like time the catch right uh it levels up again and it can level up up to six times until eventually you know it's like a bullet um Jesus. and you can pass the ball between teammates with lb you can pass it um and that game gives it a level of overcharge as well um and there are also like special balls which do special things like some of them are bombs some of them are um uh what was it like a moon ball so you can jump higher while you're holding it like there's just so much depth okay. and variety uh and then this is one other dumb thing you can do where you can like you can turn into a ball yourself and then a teammate okay. can, pick, can pick you up and throw <laughs> you. And if you hit someone, it's a one-hit kill because you have two lives. You can get hit once and then you have one, you know, so um, it takes yeah, two yeah. hits to actually wipe you out. Um, and then you, if they charge you up while they're holding you, you turn into like an AOE, like airstrike bomb. It's a bit fucking weird. But what I'm, the point is that there's so much depth here for like cerebral, like kind of like 400 IQ mind games and you really feel it. Um mm. It's just really cool, man. I, I really, really enjoyed it. It was really polished for a beta. No technical issues whatsoever. There was obviously like a load of like cosmetics to unlock. There was like, you know, a shop. I'm sure there'll be a battle pass or whatever. Um, there was a 1v1 mode, which I tried out, which was really nice as well. Again, because it just really like puts a magnifying glass on all those cool mechanics. But man, I had, I had such a good time with that game. Um, 
I'm, I'm... Yeah, no, you, you definitely sounded like you did. Um, I mean, I, I, I never got to play it because I was a bit tied up over the weekend. But mm. yeah, you sent me a message at like 1 a.m. and you were like, dude, <laughs> get this shit. And I was just like, immediately, I was like, what's he talking about? Because I, I recognize the name. But then yeah. I watched a trailer of it and I was just like, oh, I remember this. Yeah, I remember this looking quite fun. Because I, I, I think we watched the PlayStation thing or at least some of it together. And yeah, I remember I we that, that we were talking about it. Um, and it definitely did look kind of fun. Um, so I have actually whacked it on download. How how long is the beta open for? Or is, it, is it done now? Oh, yeah. that sucks. I don't actually <laughs> yeah, have to buy it. Damn yeah. it. Oh, uh, oh, well, well and, I'll just take your decide. word for it. <laughs> Yeah, unless they decide to do another beta, because it was it was a cross-play beta, so obviously it's coming to all platforms, and because it's a game that doesn't require aiming, it's so like yeah. the, the the throwing is done via lock-on. Um, so don't let that put you off. It it doesn't need free throwing. It's it's all about yeah. timing and everything else and dodging. So, um, but yeah, you did unfortunately miss it. But it's yeah May twenty first. The only thing I'm worried about is that because I genuinely think this could be. We're seeing a lot of these games come out that are like Rocket League competitors, where they're like high skill low like aiming mechanic yeah, competitive yeah. sport games like, do you know what i mean yeah, so it can, it, it can be like it picked up and played but it's also just very hard to master as well right like, yeah 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 advanced wise yeah absolutely and it's yeah. um I, because there's that yeah he's doing that other like um hockey kind of one I, can't, I really can't remember what it's it's hard to even describe but it's kind of like a hockey thing um and that looks yeah. fun as well but i haven't heard about it in a while um but yeah, so May twenty first. The, the only thing I'm worried about is that it's twenty dollars, so I'm I'm assuming twenty quid for us. I was about um, to ask what what kind of price tag it had behind it. So so it's like so it's twenty dollars. I mean, it's normally that's normally just a straight out conversion, right? We normally exactly. would just get that for for twenty pounds. It should um, be fifteen quid, but it, but it won't be. Yeah, but I mean, by the sounds of it, twenty pounds doesn't sound too bad. Oh, that, it's, yeah, like, it's not. That, that I was I was expecting sort of you know. I was expecting full price, obviously. I was expecting like 30 maybe or, yeah, or around the 15 to 30 mark. So 20 doesn't exactly put me off, you know, by the way you yeah. described the game. So it's, and it's not, um, um, it's not, yeah, like I said, it's, it's not a problem of like the, the content because like even in the beta, there were like loads of special balls, loads of cosmetic, five maps. And they said there are more in the full launch. So that's not the problem. It's more that I think the average pl- person is going to, be a bit worried about buying into it at, you know when you've got rocket league for free and you've got loads of these other games for free it's just a quite true, risky i think true. like it, it is yeah. an ea game you know so I, I feel like if they really wanted to they could ask you know they could ask to put this on games pass or games pass could ask to have them i don't know i just feel like it being mm. free would be a real benefit so i mean we'll have to wait and see but um It'd be quite interesting good, yeah it, it could make its way into games pass i mean hell outright has made its way into games pass so you really never know and that and happens so last minute now. Yeah. That happened really last minute as well. So something like that could happen, um, you know, a week before release or a couple of days before release. Um, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, uh, well, ho- hopefully there's a chance to play it on some other platforms. Obviously, I do have a PlayStation as well and a Switch. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's coming to any of those. Um, mm-hmm. Is it coming to all of them? Is it just it's coming everything? to it's, Yeah, it's coming to all of them. And that's what I meant to say, actually, because of the way that they're designed and their low skill mechanic, it's, you can put them on all platforms. Like cross play, it's very, very easy without having, you know, giving PC a benef- uh, uh, advantage. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, okay, that's pretty cool. sick. So Fallout mm-hmm. 4, Knockout City, uh, just before we swiftly move on from the intro here. Um, and I, Joe, I just booted up, because obviously I'm waiting for, to play more Outriders with you. I booted up. I've had Hollow Knight on my back for a while, and it's one of those ones where it's not a huge commitment, I, I don't think, anyway. And people always speak really highly of Hollow Knight. And I tried it a couple of months ago. Um, and I, I only played it for like half an hour or whatever, but I was like, eh, I don't know, it just felt a bit weird. And I was like, All right, I'm not sure. But I booted it up, given it like an hour or two um, this afternoon. And um, I'm into it. Yeah, like I'm, great. I'm, I'm hooked. Yeah. I'm hooked now. Um, I'm loving the I, style. I, I'm, I'm loving really the atmosphere. Like um i do think the jump feels a bit weird still but you know it's it's whatever it's a it's a drop in the ocean other than that it's all pretty cool so far so i'm a, i'll report back next week with that and see how that's going on yeah yeah no it is really good i've played quite a bit of hollow Knight. i think i probably sunk about maybe 10 to 15 hours into it when i was um playing on my switch um with it uh it's great yeah i i, I really like it um i thought it was a good game so yeah yeah, yeah. carry cool. on with that yeah, we'll do. I'll um, I'll hope I'm still playing by next week. I'll um, I'll report back on it for sure. Nice. 
Cool. All right. Well, let's roll into um, what's been happening this week. I mean, obviously, um, there's been a few bits and bobs, but one of the big thing. I mean, I don't know if you've been on top of the news this week, Tim, but there has been a few. Um, there has been a few big things this week, but one of them, obviously, as we spoke last week, is Outriders has dropped into Games Pass uh, pretty hot. Um, and just as before, we will give our sort of impressions and a bit of a preview over the next sort of uh, 20, 30 minutes. But before we do, I just want to kind of cap off the success that the Outriders has seen because this has been this has been kind of staggering, actually. Um, have you do you have have you heard anything about this about sort of the success that Outriders is seeing? Not the actual statistics, no. Well, um, <laughs> let me fill you in. All right. Do it. All right. So on Steam. Outriders has hit a peak player count, concurrent player count of 124k. Avengers only ever got 31. Jesus. Um, so it's like more than, it's like only ever got 124. My it's God. hit the same all-time player count as Borderlands, the franchise. Not Borderlands 3, not Borderlands 1, Borderlands 2 as well. I mean, I know it came to Steam late, but that's crazy though yeah that no, that's crazy. very impressive yeah what is that, that is that is very very shocking i don't yeah i don't know i don't know <laughs> what, what, what about it has caught has caught the attention of the public eye so much especially and... as if we're talking steam as well so like this is people full price purchasing it exactly right yeah that's that's crazy um wow so, I mean, I mean, like coming off that, you know, it's, and the reason we're both surprised is not because Outriders is is a, is a bad game, far from it. But it's it's. I think we can all agree. You, as the listener, as well, can probably agree that Outriders was not a game we were expecting to hit four times, uh, three times, yeah, three and a half times <laughs> the player count of mm. Avengers. Avengers. I mean, I know the game didn't do well, but it's still you'd have thought a lot of people would have tried yeah. it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Or let alone Borderlands. Like God, that's you know. This is so. I mean, it's, I'm just happy for people can fly. Really, you know, this is um, a new new IPs generally don't do well, and it's bonkers that it's competing in terms of concurrent player count with one of the uh, if one of the if not the biggest uh, game in the genre in the loot shooter genre. Yeah, know, yeah. What's kind of made the genre? You know, that's what, totally what it is today. To be honest, yeah. And we, you know, speaking of its quality, last week we made a couple of. Uh, predictions uh, and i'm looking at the open critic score for outriders right now and um if i remember correctly i said 78 and you said 76 does that sound right i did yeah yeah i went for the lower end yeah would you be how much for pain in the ass would it be if i told you it was 77 <laughs> <laughs> i i mean it would definitely not cause any arguments. We just shake <laughs> well, hands true. and walk away. <laughs> I guess. So, but, uh, so it's, yeah. it's a bit weird because obviously the game, because the game has had a bit of a shaky launch, like it's had, uh, yeah, like the, there has been some server instability and in that clearly the game has been far more popular than the, they intended to be. But I feel like this is always the case. I feel like this is always the case. With any of these games, there's always like a really huge spike and I just don't understand why it's never predicted or like I can't get yeah. my head around it. But but whatever. I, I'm not a fucking engineer, so I'm sure it's more tricky <laughs> than that. Um, but the game it, that's based on eleven eleven reviews. Seventy seven is based on eleven reviews. You know, as of yesterday there was only four. This morning there was only six, and it shot up to eleven in the last sort of six hours. Um, and it was at an eighty. It was like an eighty two, and then it was at an eighty, and now it's at seventy seven. So it is coming down a bit. Um, I think as some of the harsher reviews are coming in, especially now with some of the server shakiness. Um, mm. So we'll see what it shakes out to be. But as of right now, it's 77. So yeah, we can shake hands and agree. We were both right. <laughs> yeah, that's that's fine with me. I'm happy with yeah. that. No conflict. So we'll see, we'll see what it, um, when it sort of stabilizes, what it ends up there. But what, moving on to sort of the impressions, like what, what would you say is your, your overall impressions from what you've played so far of, of the full game of Outriders? <laughs> Um, my overall impressions are that it's, it's, it's good. It's, it's, it's very good. Um, it's super fun. Love the combat, love the skills, love the character designs. Um, 
really big fan of the the sort of just the pacing of the game you know the how fast you level up although obtaining your last mm. skill has been a bit on the slow side but like i feel like you obtain your skills at a nice rate i feel like you get loot rarities at a nice rate uh, i feel like the purples in this game are that of like an exotic in in uh in destiny uh, which is really cool because you know they modify they, they not only have like a cool perk like oh you shoot someone and they explode and their bones act as shrapnel you know and hurt other enemies around them or you freeze them but they also like change your skills as well you know purples uh, like adapt your skills too which i feel like is what an exotic does in destiny you look at most exotics and it's like it has a perk and then it has a perk that affects one of your skills and changes it in some way um mm. which makes me think that you know I, i've already got one legendary so far but it makes me think that the legendaries are just going to be like even cooler than exotic so um i'm a big fan of the loot so far and and how that all sort of works the the drop rates and like i said how they feel as well um and yeah apart from some technical issues like don't get me wrong it, it's it's very much dampened our experience Oh, I've lost you a bit. You've um, I can't hear you. Um, I'll just pause the show quickly while we get this. Speaking of technical issues, <laughs> we'll get this finished. Fucking outriders is cursed, man. Uh, all right, hi everyone. We've um, we 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 are back. Um, yes, we are. Uh, as I was keep talking, speaking. <laughs> as I was talking about technical issues, I had a technical issue, which is yeah. just fantastic i was saying um, it's cursed maybe, outriders yeah maybe the out, outriders devs would just say it's not as easy as it looks is it that's my <laughs> microphone D <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah yeah so uh yeah so yeah i was talking about like the technical difficulties which obviously have um dampened our experience definitely um just on the fact that yeah we couldn't play for like six or seven hours um on the friday um, it was also down on the Thursday for a little while as well. I remember we were waiting. Um, so that that's annoying. I'm not, you know, I understand these things happen, but like you said, you do kind of need to prepare for these things. Um, yeah. Which is a bit weird that they didn't. And, um, you know, but uh, it is what it is. Game launches, this does happen quite a lot. You know, I wasn't entirely but hurt, although it was down for a while <laughs> like it was quite a long yeah, time and it was like a really hours. it was like a really peak time as well it was like yeah. 7 30 it was down till like fucking midnight it was yeah. it was ridiculous um which is annoying when it happens at those really peak times but um I, I, and not to mention just a lot of bugs um which we've experienced playing co-op um mm. and i like a, a lot of these things I, I would imagine a lot of people have an experience playing solo which i heard playing solo is really bad by the way um in outriders but we'll we'll, we'll maybe i bet uh, it's quite get, good get to that on a later date really okay that's weird how we uh, did things, I, but... I know I, you i know you don't get the free respawn when you're playing by yourself which is really weird but i, I mean i've heard it i've heard it's quite solo friendly generally to, to play outriders oh, okay. i read a couple of articles just sort of here and there they were probably a bit clickbaity and stuff like that you know because like i said i haven't really been around much this weekend um but yeah the ones i did read were saying that it really didn't seem very solo friendly and um it's definitely a game to play with your friends um mm. and probably avoid if you're playing a single player nah nah, um, no way no way i like i said I, I played the first like seven levels on a, on a new character with a technomancer and it, it, it felt pretty good generally i think i think it's it's diff- it's a lot more unforgiving um okay. but like i yeah maybe maybe in the sort of me uh like medium and later levels um it gets a little bit everyone just becomes a little bit bullet spongy for a solo player maybe oh, that's yeah. when it just sort of starts to turn a bit crap yeah, um maybe yeah may, maybe the early game is fine but um uh, but yeah we we've had loads of bugs um you know like not not like a, a stupid amount like i've played worse games in terms of um technical difficulties mm. but like things like i would say you know, when one of you I, die and it takes you like two minutes to spawn in that happens like 70 percent of the time yeah. it happens so much and it's very annoying 
That's what um, I would say. That if there's like there's like there's not loads of bugs, but the ones that are there are quite consistent. Severe. Yeah, yeah. There's like there's like two or three which are happening too often, and they're like the worst kind of ones that like you have to reboot your game. It's kind of thing. Yeah. And it's like oh my god, it's so what? Not to mention every time you just exit your game. If you wanted to just exit your lobby and start a new lobby from the game main menu, it seems like every time you just you you want to just leave the game, it just kicks you straight back to your dashboard, and you have to boot up the game from fresh for whatever yeah. reason. It just it, it, everything just exits you from the client itself, um, and it's annoying because there's an unskippable. <laughs> we've talked about this. There's oh, an unskippable cutscene when you boot it up that's just awful. It's got screen tearing. It's not <laughs> nice to look at, and it's just like ten seconds long and it's obnoxious. Maybe I'm being spoiled because everything is always so damn quick with load times these days. Well, that I mean that is something um, I wanted to touch on actually because it's it it really draws attention to it. Like the fact that that um, it doesn't appear to be working with quick resume at the moment either, um, Outriders. So it's, I mean, obviously it's an online game and that's, you know, whatever, but usually you can just skip past these menus. You know, you go straight, oh, we spoke about this with Apex a few weeks ago, you know, you can skip straight to the menu. It says, oh, you're offline, you go back to menu, click A again, and you, and you reconnect to the servers. But, you know, that's a five second process as opposed to like a 45 second going through a cutscene, loading in, yeah. reconnecting, yada, yada, yada. And like, the, so not only is there that, but also the actual like design of the game in that it's done so in such a modular way where you are kind of um you have to like load into every area and you know they do the stupid fucking like little jumps very annoying from area to area that is like really usually if i played this game five years ago wouldn't have had a problem with it but i think there is the fact that firstly all the other games in the genre have like really good design like like the world design you know like division and destiny are like you know s tier for that borderlands is like pretty good in like a tier this is just a dreadful and like so like you put that together with the fact that we're now used to really quick load times like i was just playing fallout 4 and we all know what those but all bethesda games are like you're loading to every single thing but because of like quick resume and because of like the new ssds on these consoles it's like a it's hard it's like half a second you know i click on it door opens a mid you know there's no loading there mm. really um but and it's just so it's just you compound those things together and you kind of get this sort of semi frustrating experience where you're like, you know, you find yourself like putting your controller down every few seconds because you have to wait for like some stupid. And I know you can skip the cutscenes, but it's just like fade to black cutscene, fade to black, you're back in. It's not that yeah. slow. It's just kind of disruptive. It just disrupts. The it's, flow of it. it's just yeah, it's jarring. Yeah, it's just it's yeah. it it takes you out of the game. Like, uh, and I mean, we we enjoy taking the piss out of Outriders. Um, in that sort of sense, where we're just like, oh, it's, it's canon that we knew we know how he got out of that cave because we saw him <laughs> yes. climb out. You know, God forbid if he just appeared at the home base, I'd, yeah. I'd lie awake, like trying to sleep at night, thinking, how did he get out of that cave? But yeah. like, <laughs> you know, show us a clip of him climbing out of the cavern. Yeah, and we were just like, oh yeah. God, I had to see that. I could never have put two and two and figured out how we yeah. got out of there. It would have, yeah, it would have driven me Crikey. to insanity trying, <laughs> trying to connect the dots of how he got out. Um, but yeah, and that's that's what I mean. It's it, it's it's fun in games, but like it's it's just jarring and it's not needed and it just seems very outdated. It, yeah. It's it's a very outdated sort of thing to do. Um, I did you know. I'd I'd like to think that the new Elder Scrolls game when it comes out won't have any of that shit where you go into a building and it loads you a black screen loads you if it does i'll be severely disappointed maybe like a town sure but i think once i'm in the town i should be able to just fucking just do stuff without needing to ever go black screen or have a a, a loading sort of section yeah 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 um and Although, yeah, it, yeah i was gonna say like I, I will say that i had read that the the reason that they do those cutscenes so often is it's kind of a design choice and they did it to re it was either to resync. I'm not. I'm not sure if it was like technical, like a technical aspect, or just done for like player um, convenience or whatever. Like to either sync players' like perceptions of like, oh, we're all at the same point now, or it's to sync like the server, like the lobby, like oh, like we're all at, we're all at this point now. And um, so I don't know yeah. which one it is, but it's to do with syncing the players' experience. Is what I read. 
Yeah, I think that's probably what it is. It's probably just it probably just takes that time to check that all the players are doing the same thing and sort of you know aligns them all to make sure they don't miss any dialogue or a cutscene or anything that's happening in the game. You know, you all yeah. load in at the same time. You know, someone doesn't run off ahead and kill enemies without you sort of thing. Uh, it just kind of lines everyone up. Um, yeah. So, but I don't know. I'm sure there are ways around it. I'm no dev, but yeah, it just oh, comes definitely. across as, as outdated and a bit jarring and a bit. Uh, but yeah, so my experience with Outriders is it's, it's good. It's good. It's, it, it's very good, actually. I do really enjoy it. And I've been wanting to play it loads again this weekend. Um I do very much enjoy it, but it's just got its quirks, you know, and, and the, the writing is dreadful, awful. It, it, <laughs> it's very bad. Special. Like, it, I don't know what, like your guy was just, he just gets these powers and he just, he's just a dick. He's just <laughs> such a dick. He just guns down everyone in his path and says a one liner. I don't understand. Like I don't really feel like my protagonist should be like this in a world he doesn't know how how it works. He's just woken up from cryosleep. But he's just running around like a fucking action hero, gunning people down in the head and saying yeah. the most outrageous things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's so funny some of the things he says. It's ludicrous. Oh my god! Uh, and yeah. some of the some of the like direction choices. I remember that one cutscene we had with that camera that kept spinning no, between the two people. It, I'm convinced it's a bug. Nobody nobody sat down and was like, "This is how we're gonna do this scene." It, it can't be. It can't be, man. It was. It was. I said it then, and I'll say it now. It is the worst in-game cutscene I've ever experienced in my life, and it was a yeah. solid like forty-five seconds to a minute long. It was so I can't believe it. just to like try and describe it to the listener. So like what what had happened was there was a conversation going on between like our protagonist, the guy you're playing, or girl or guy you're playing, with um with someone else, and we were both sat down, and the camera was like swinging from us yeah. to them so they were like sat across the table and it was swinging so it was going left to right right to left so it wasn't cutting from it was us like every time that person said something so it's like i say something the camera goes to me he says something yeah but the it camera swung. goes to him yeah like yeah, it but it, but yeah yeah you could physically see the camera and its direction moving to that person yeah. it wasn't like uh quick cuts yeah, to the person yet. you could see the entire movement and it was like blurred as well and they were going for this cool like whoo, 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 sort yeah. of feeling you know as the camera oh flicks it in. but it was like slower than the dialogue yeah. as well yeah it was, <laughs> it was, it was so awful. stupid it was like like 10 seconds into it i remember i was like screaming that i'm gonna be sick like it i felt so <laughs> sick like i felt like i was spinning around it was awful <laughs> And then it just that. ends so abruptly. And <laughs> oh my God, it was the funny. I was wetting myself. I was actually wetting myself. It's just it so was, weird. It was just, yeah, there's some, there are some weird choices or qu- maybe a bug. <laughs> we don't really know. It's got to be, but <laughs> it has to be. Like, there's no way. Like, there's no way someone made that decision. I refuse to believe it. But, I mean, for now, we'll say it's, uh, we'll say it's a design choice. <laughs> we'll give them the benefit. But, it was yeah it was so yeah i mean that that's kind of how i feel about it and and all the car- all the classes seem great as well like all of them i've only picked one at the moment which is the the technomancer um he's super fun i think he he has a couple of skills that are a bit underwhelming um uh, maybe they'll get patched i don't know i'm not really too sure but like he's he's super he's super fun it's super cool um and all the other classes are great which is not something i can say about every single game of that game type that I've played in the past. Like, uh, I mean, if we were comparing it to Anthem, for example, you know, there are some, I didn't really ever want to play the Colossus in Anthem. Um, it never really appealed to me. So like I played like Interceptor and the Ranger and stuff like that, you know, Destiny, I was never really that keen on playing the Warlock, you know, so I played a bit of Titan and a bit of Hunter. you know, there's always the class that I was never like, super fond of, uh, fond of but in this one i i kind of can't wait to play all of them they they all seem really cool and unique um so yeah, yeah. but um yeah i mean how, how how do you feel about outriders i'm sure your, yeah your take? yeah yeah i mean like you, you you said a lot of what 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 i mean i would say um i think like it's um a lot of the gameplay systems are generally pretty good cover is still a bit shit they've improved it since the demo a little bit uh, but you it's did... still a bit shit i did uh, I was going to say, you did mention that you felt like the shooting changed. 
Oh, yeah, I, is, so is this, this is still of, in your head? It is, is it's this? not in my head. It's a real fucking thing. I've seen threads about it, so it's not just me. Um, okay. So, so on console, um, I don't know, mouse and keyboard presumably is better. I, I, I don't know if this is just because they haven't added aiming options, but like I said, it didn't feel this way in the demo. It now feels a bit floaty. It feels like there's a little bit of input lag. Um, and I know there's an auto aim there to help me out, but like I... Like, man, like I, when I was trying to play the Technomancer and I played it a bit solo, and obviously I was picking up a few more snipers because that's what the um, that's what the class caters to. And I was just like, I mean, it's not impo- like it's tolerable. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, mm. it's not it's not unplayable, but it doesn't it just doesn't feel snappy, man. Like, it just feels like my aim is wandering off and doing its own thing. And um, I don't yeah, feel like sometimes the... I have to rely on the or like the snapping, like just tapping LT to get the shot off. Yeah, maybe, maybe that maybe the auto aim is just a bit too high maybe and with all like the enemy sort of off. piling up and being nearby it was sort of no. dragging the aim everywhere no it wasn't that's that that's what I thought I thought maybe it was that but I tried turning it off and giving it a go but there is still this like weird feeling of very slight input delay and I don't know what it is and, like I, I, it made me like question my sanity like I went on, on Apex just to make yeah. sure it wasn't like my controller and my TV and everything felt fine there Um, but it wasn't like it was just I don't know what it is there's something about the aiming which just feels a bit off um like i said it's not intolerable like it's it's fine um but it's wonder if it's something they'll patch maybe 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 they're aware of this issue as well i mean to be honest i didn't notice it i mean maybe i maybe i did i don't know i didn't notice it enough to point it out and be like oh like you know like you were really sort of bugged out by it you were like this has changed something's happened here yeah. Um, which is weird because I even play the I I am the sniper character. No, but um, I I think I so... having said that having said that I will say even though I did I, I like it was already in my head when I went to play the Technomancer and started using snipers I think it's actually worse with the other classes because you're like zi- like there's cla- uh, you know enemies are like running past you and you're trying to like swing your aim round kind of thing because yeah. you're darting and you're doing like one eighties and stuff you feel it a lot more then um, like there are times where I'm like trying to track someone and even with the auto aim I'm like this it just feels horrible. Um, and with sniping, oh, okay. it's kind of you're doing more minute tracking and the auto aim kicks in. So like, I felt it oh, then. So maybe, I, do, I think it's more pronounced. Maybe that's why the, I didn't notice it. With the close range classes, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm not entirely sure about any of that. So, um, and I also wanted to touch on uh, the, like sort of the mod system as well, because I think that's something that they've clearly done. They've put a lot of, of time and care into, and that is the fact that they've kind of separated the mods into like level one mods, level two mods, or level three mods. And that's, I think that's kind of what you were saying earlier about like the purples, like have a level two and a level one mod in. Um, and that feels really good. And then the legendaries will have like a level three mod. And like, this is all, it's all just really good. I think that's just a really nice way of doing it. Um, so it's all quite exciting to like kind of find a mod you haven't found yet. And obviously like once you have it, it's kind of, you can kind of add that to your collection. So um, I think like you said, like the pacing of, of the loot and uh, the way that that's all done feels really good. Um, so, and, and like, despite my rant about the aiming before, like generally the combat feels quite good. Like the abilities feel quite good. It's all punchy. It's all quite colorful. The different classes are quite pronounced in their abilities. So there's no getting lost. And I definitely can understand why they decided to go with three player rather than four, having now played it for what, five, or five, six, it seven hours. Be, it would be chaos with four people flinging abilities yeah. everywhere. But like also, I think it's like the mods as well. Like cause some of the mods are like more subtle than others. You know, some of them they like explode when they die and it does a bit of damage to everyone around them. Um, and you, sometimes you see it and sometimes you don't. But like if there's four people, like you would never see it. You'd never like, it would be so hard to like keep on top of like, was that me that did that or was that someone else? So yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's probably a good decision in the end. Um, but yeah, I, I, and I, did, I wanted to kind of like, in terms of what you said, like the script writing is just... It's just all over the place. Like, because there's some elements of which, which are kind of cool. Like, it's quite generally the game's quite colourful, and I think that's quite nice. Um, and like the game, we spoke about in the demo that the game's environments felt quite inorganic, and that there's just kind of like here's cover for you to use, here's cover for you to use, and it just kind of feels like it's, you know, it just feels a bit contrived. Um, but I feel like that's actually gotten a bit better as we've gone into the game. And there feels like less of these areas where there's just like cover, like randomly, you know, like a stone, (laughs) like rectangle just dumped into the middle of a field for no reason. Um, It's still there a bit, but it's it's not as bad as it was. Um, But yeah, man, the the whole like script writing and the story, the the fiction itself kind of seems okay. Like it's hard to know where the the story is going. 
Uh, but it's not bad, you know, it's like, it's reasonably interesting, but like, just the script writing, especially from the protagonist, because the side characters are actually okay, but mm-hmm. just the guy you're, pl- guy or girl you're playing as, it's just, it's just dreadful, and I, I know we, we made this parallel the other day, didn't we? We said, um, last week, we made on, we said on the show that, you know, the, the team, like, Rare, like, the team by MC of Thieves is, like, full of, like, you know, amazing music designers, and, uh, you know, like, environmental artists, and story writers, um, but not combat designers. And I kind of feel like Outriders has just got kind of the opposite. Like generally, you know, the design here for a looter shooter is really good. Um, the mod system, like all of this has been thought out like really far in advance and it's, and it's really good. But like in terms of like, you know, the, the story writing and the script writing, it's just dreadful. So um, yeah, overall yeah. I'm, I'm mostly in agreement with you and I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see it's doing well. Um, hopefully I imagine it will settle out in the high seventies somewhere. Um, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, be nice for you to see uh, see it crack eighties. Yeah, nice. yeah, and I think it's, it just kind of has also come at a good time, you know, where it's there hasn't been any big releases other than Monster Hunter Rise the other week, really. Um, mm. There hasn't been any other big re- releases like this, um, so these I think that's really really helped it, um, you know, it break the numbers that it has at least on Steam. Yeah, yeah, and it's um, I mean just to touch on as well just a couple of really cool features I think it's done to actually sort of improve on the genre as well. I think the, um, like you said, I think the modding is really good. Um, I think it, it's simple and just really good. It's not convoluted and it's not like, oh my God, Destiny's mod system. I couldn't, I mean, we went back to it and I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. I, I didn't know what I was doing, what I was collecting. There's like 15 different currencies that all do different things. Mm-hmm. This is very simple. It's just tier one, tier two, tier three. You, you break down the weapons to get those mods. They're in your collection and you can use them on anything you want. You could just slap them on, you know, uh, gear providing. Obviously you can't put like a tier three into a blue, but like, you know, it's nice and simple. Um, it's easy to do and i also think another thing that i really liked was the um when we found out about this the just click down on the d-pad and loot everything in the area fantastic Mm. love that great improvement on the overall genre so if borderlands had that that'd be sick i would love that um i also really like the fact that you can go into your menu and in the bottom right you can you can just select everything that's green everything that's white or everything that's blue and then yeah. choose to like mass dismantle everything that's green. It could be improved. Like you said, it triggers you a lot that you can't do that in shops. You have to go <laughs> out and do it. Yeah. And then you go into the shops to sell it all. But I think it's just really, I think that's a really nice quality of life change that you can just, you know, it's just an improvement on, on like I said, just how that these sort of games work. Mm. And I think in, I think future releases for these sort of games, Division, Borderlands, even like, Diablos and stuff like that. I think they'll probably take notes from uh, from that sort of stuff. Um, you know, the the loot everything in the area and the filter by uh, rarities and auto select everything. I think I think those will probably be in all the future games now. Um, at least I'd hope they are because I think they're great. So, kudos yeah. to Outriders for that. Kudos to yeah, people can fly. Definitely agree. Yeah, it's um, it, it, it's clear that I think at least from a game design point of view, from the looter shooter kind of that 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 central genre they've been taking notes over the last number of years or they've been developing of like oh this would be helpful you know they're clearly they play these games themselves and they're like you know these would be useful features um so absolutely yeah i agree yeah fab so um that's outriders for you um i'm sure it won't be the last time we speak about it um as we continue to play over the next uh, over the coming weeks or months or whatever but um Generally positive impressions, um, just marred by a couple of weird um, uh, special things <laughs> that happen in the game yeah. and server issues and bugs. Um, but yeah, generally good. So, um, moving on. Um, you know, there's been a couple of um, bigger things that happened this week, and I know we're kind of operating on a time limit. So I'm going to um, I'm going to move us through some of the bigger news um, that's happened through this week, and then we'll we'll, we'll kind of go more granular. And um, if there's some smaller stuff we don't get to, then that's uh, that's not the end of the world. So something happened with a certain a certain game, um, a certain sports game that typically doesn't come to Xbox. Did you um? Is this ringing any bells to you? A certain sports game mm-hmm. that doesn't come to Xbox. Mm-hmm. Um, no. 
I would be I talking know. about. I'm just trying to think. <laughs> let me just try, let me just think. And so you we, won't we get, get it. We we get hockey. <laughs> mm-hmm. We get American football. We get f- football. We get basketball. I know is it something obscure like lacrosse or like baseball or something? <laughs> well, maybe obscure to to us, but yeah, baseball. Um, baseball. I mean, and obviously oh, this is not. We play proper sports over here in the UK. You know, we use we use cricket bats, not baseball, uh, not baseball yeah. bats. So, um, but nonetheless, this is pretty astounding. So, Major League Baseball, in case you didn't know, uh, MLB the show, um, is really the only popular like AAA baseball game out there. Like, it's pretty much got a monopoly on the genre. You know, whereas I, I mean, I suppose a lot of the sports games do. You know, with NBA being the only baseball uh, basketball rather, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. MLB the show has been developed by PlayStation first party for the the last like decade or so. Um, you know, the MLB have been working with um, uh, PlayStation Studios to make this game for the last decade or so. So it's only ever come to PlayStation. And for obviously for a lot of people, a lot of Americans out there, or maybe or not, maybe even the non-Americans that enjoy the baseball games, literally the only way to play any sort of big budget baseball game, which are apparently very good, by the way, I should add, was to get a PlayStation. So, about three weeks ago, it was announced that Major League Baseball, the show, was coming to Xbox. And this was big celebration. Yay, fantastic, great news. Don't really know why. Um, I guess at some point, MLB has decided actually Xbox is picking up pace and actually they're getting a decent user base now, especially with PC. So, we're losing a lot of money. Um, and this is, you know, arguably part of the agreement they made with Sony. You know, our, our next one is going to come, we want it to come to Xbox. So, whatever. That happened and everyone was very excited. Great. This week, it was announced that Major League Baseball, the show, 21, is going to be coming to Games Pass. Oh. So a game that was previously locked down and, like, viewed as a PlayStation exclusive is now launching not only multi-platform, but straight into Xbox Games Pass. This is going to be a game which is now going to be benefiting from backwards compatibility, you know, like forwards compatibility, backwards compatibility, you can play it on both cons. So all of the issues that we've described in previous weeks that people are may or may not be having with their PS5 around the compatibility, the lack of quick resume, um, the, you know, these sorts of things, you know, no games pass. Arguably, Major League Base MLB The Show is going to be is going to play best now on Xbox and it's going to obviously going to be coming straight to Games Pass and because it's a first party game, it's going to be 70 dollars or you know 70 quid or whatever on um on playstation and there's you know understandably a lot of people (laughs) reasonably upset you know some people more on the fanboy side and some people more on the financial side but given that this is a game that's typically been just like if, if you if you go out and buy playstations to play this game and it's now the worst place to play the game yeah yeah it's um wow, it's just such a weird turn of events. And obviously this is this is less big news to us, but for a lot of people out there, this is really big news. It's it's just kind of bonkers and, and madness that some first party games from studios are now coming to to Xbox and launching into Games Pass. Like that's completely crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean like, like you said, it's not really big news to us in terms of just the you know, just the baseball side of things, but like in terms of just xbox's status in these people's eyes and you know like you said the fact that we're gaining more traction and um you know they're clearly seeing it as a benefit to actually switch over and and do it on a different platform rather than the one it's it's been residing on the whole time like Mm -hmm. that in itself is quite big news you know and i'm sure you know these things have a domino effect you know (laughs) like you know, I'm sure a, a lot of these um, studios are, you know, looking into this sort of stuff anyway, and always comparing these things for earnings and everything. But, you know, when they look into such a dramatic shift for, for, for something like this, you know, they're going to start investigating it themselves. And they're going to be like, well, they clearly did this for a reason. You know, is this something we need to do? Like, yeah, um, you know, so it, it's it's pretty big. It is pretty big news, you know, in, in, in terms of that. It's, it's it's quite exciting for the for the future, definitely. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, this is like it only ever... Like, if you look at PlayStation Plus's offerings in the last few months, it's been really good. And I, I think I probably mentioned this on a previous week, but it's to me, it's abundantly apparent that PlayStation is seeing Games Pass feeling a bit threatened and putting a bit more money into 
PlayStation Plus for their free offerings. Um, you know, like last month they had Final Fantasy VII Remake. Um, I'm just having a quick look now. Um, yeah, it looks like Days uh, April, April. Yeah, Days Gone, um, Odd World, Soulstorm, which is one of their newer first party. Is, is it first party? I think it is. Um, that's going to be coming launching into PS Plus, right? I believe that's the first time they've like launched one of their bigger games. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like their, their, the quality of their PS Plus games is definitely increasing, but it's it's just um, yeah, it's wow, it's just kind of weird to be seeing this happening. <laughs> yeah, no, it's kind of weird. Um, but hey, like like we said in the in you know past episodes, you know it, it does only benefit the consumer. Well. That's a lie because it doesn't only benefit the consumer. I'm sure a lot of consumers are pretty uh, pissed off about um, MLB doing this, you know, especially if you've gone out and bought a brand new crispy PS5 or something. And, Mm. um, and, you know, I don't think, you know, a a lot of people would do that. And yeah, maybe they are just MLB, you know, they, they just, they they love that. They live and breathe it. Um, They're going to be pretty, pretty, pretty pissed off um, that, it's now the worst place to play it and the most yeah. expensive place. Well, just, this just, is it. Just 70 quid is, is a lot of money for people, um, mm-hmm. you know, that, that have a, a mortgage rent, you know, all this sort of stuff. It's 70 quid is, it's tough. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's quite a chunk. Absolutely. Um, yeah. 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 So, I mean, I mean, this is, this is kind of the thing. It's, um, it's 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 just a, it's just a big movement i think and, you know when we said earlier you know it was it was crazy enough to see outriders a new ip triple a game launching into games pass but now there's not only is uh, you know an exclusive game going to be going multi-platform it's also going to be launching into games pass as well so it's just crazy how that's going to be happening and i know this is xbox as well has started pulling ahead in terms of performance. Um, it was a bit mixed uh, when the seat, when the consoles both launched, but on multi-platforms, um, if anybody watches any of the, the stuff that Digital Foundry do, they do like the, you know, the tech um, uh, analysis and breakdowns across the consoles and the pixel counting and all of that. They're all really fascinating videos, but the point is that Xbox Series X has started pulling ahead in terms of performance, which is what people expected. Um, so like, you know, beyond that, it's likely going to be a game that performs better on Series X as well. So, you know, it's just one of those things that it's a really bad look um, for PlayStation, to be honest. It's, it's, it's just a bad look. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's not good. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. So that was a thing that happened. That was um, fairly big news. I mean, something that was kind of um, a bit funny, a bit less serious, more lighthearted. Maybe not, actually, because it is a bit... <laughs> it's a bit stupid, but um, we obviously had April Fools um, in the past week, and usually um, silly things are announced, and journalists should be on their toes for um, these sorts of um, fake posts. And um, oh, I know about this one. April Fools posts. I saw so, this. Yeah, so we had a um, a fake Halo Twitter account uh, put up a fake picture. Um, of a fake delay <laughs> to 2022. Um, and, you know, the second it was put out, um, I'm sure it wasn't just Kotaku, but Kotaku is the one getting targeted here. Um, they ran with an article was up in five, 10 minutes. Yeah, Halo Infinite delayed to 2022. I didn't get a yeah. chance to read the article, but I saw the title when I saw that it was a thing that happened because it got deleted quite fast. Um, but this is just... And I like this something. So uh, Jez Corden of Windows Central tweeted about something, uh, something about this as well. And he said, um, you know, two weeks ago, Xbox held a Twitch conference showing over over 100 awesome looking indie games. And it was crickets. Uh, A fake Halo Twitter put out a fake (laughs) April Fool's joke about Halo getting delayed. And it gets like an article in seconds. And I know maybe this is Apple Swaringers because it's Halo. But. It's just a bit weird. It's just I, it does sometimes feel that people are very keen to jump on negative press. I mean, maybe it is they're just looking at the oh. numbers and they they know that negative press from Xbox generates a lot of clicks. But there is a kind of a thing of like, I can't believe you fucking fell for that. I can't believe you fucking jumped on that. Oh, um, and they yeah. apologise afterwards. But yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't help but just be like, serves you right, sort of uh, yeah. uh, attitude. You know, like you, yeah, you, you got to look into these things more. 
it was just it was clearly just such a rush job wasn't it the man just fucking yeah. all woman just clonked down his coffee mug logged on for the morning <laughs> saw that which was like jesus spilled his coffee Get it everywhere out! control c just instantly <laughs> yeah. published this thing and you're just like come on man look at the look at the calendar like come on yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just oh and uh, yeah you, you can't help but just laugh uh a little bit but uh, i'm glad it wasn't died that, that, that would have bummed me out yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah it was, but yeah because I, I i read it sort of um you know i saw it posted and someone tried to that the forum that i was reading when it got posted on the person who posted it tried to trick us as well <laughs> you know they just put out a sad face and like you yeah. know directly put the screenshot i was reading it and at the bottom it said chris lee and chris lee was the um old director of uh, at 343 he left uh like back in november when the game got, de- got delayed um and then the game got picked up by joseph state and as the creative director to kind of take over so when i got to the bar i was like that's not right like something's wrong here and then obviously i went to twitter and then saw that it was uh not even the official account that had posted it, but yeah, it's um, it's God, just crazy that someone ran with account. it. No, exactly. It's not. It wasn't not even the official account. No, it wasn't the official account. Yeah. Jesus. So it's, uh, it's just uh, it's just crazy. That's funny. It's just crazy. It is funny though. It is funny. <laughs> Fucking got you good. Yeah. Uh, good stuff. Um, and now, so I mean, in less light-hearted news, um, Sony and. And I feel like I don't want to be talking too much about Sony, but this doesn't just apply to Sony. This applies to Nintendo and it, cause it speaks volumes to what Xbox are doing as well. Sony closed their PlayStation three, their PSP and their PS Vita stores, or rather they're going to be closing them. They announced they'll be closed by July. So all the stores that you can access, you know, just like the PlayStation uh, shop or whatever the digital shop is, that's, you oh. won't be able to buy anything. They'll, they'll, they'll be gone dead. Oh, on so, my, so, oh yeah, I see. So all, yeah, all those shops, all the, all the games that are only you can only get on PS3. Bearing in mind that the PlayStation Five doesn't support PS3 games or PSP or PS Vita, um, mm. because Sony are, like are clearly like less interested in the backwards compatibility. Like they're barely doing it for the PS4. So those games that are about to be axed are gone forever. Damn. And and this is like a big part of Phil Spencer has harped on this as well, but like a big part of like why they're doing backwards compatibility isn't just about the value to the customer. It's not just about being able to take your games with you and, and playing them on whatever device. It's also about preservation. You know, it's like, like this f- philosophical idea of like art should be preserved and you don't get mm-hmm. this problem with movies. You don't get this problem with TV music. Um, even though we've moved into a digital age with music, you know, away from CD and it's all digital now, you just don't get that because it const- gaming seems to be the space you know where we're constantly like pushing for new hardware um so it's just it's it's crazy because I, I was having a quick read earlier it's, it's like over 1500 games that are about to vanish off the face of the earth um <sighs> and like, of course like you know it's these are older games you know what is the percent of people that are realistically going to go back and play them like i get that i get that's part of like the formula that they're making but like it doesn't take into account that these games aren't being preserved and like the devs who made them aren't going to be able to play their own games they're not they can't even boot them up to point to them anymore you know people who do want to play them can't and it's just this you know it, like i said it's kind of this beyond actually making the value worse for the consumer it, there is this kind of philosophical like, like what about preservation you know and that's that's a real problem i don't know what, what do you think yeah I, I completely agree yeah it's all about just you know, I feel like these things have a right to be timeless. You know, they 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 have a right to just still exist and people to play them whenever they want, even if the percentages are low, like you said, the people going back to them. I just I just think it's really weird. Um, it's 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 a bit of a slap in the face for everyone that worked on them, and um, you know, I I, I don't know. I, I feel like even looking at like ps vita and stuff like that i don't feel like they're not even that old yeah like i feel like that's just really weird if i was like developing games for that thing and then i was just like oh that thing's gone forever you can only there are only physical copies of that now in the world which by the way the physical copies of these sort of things the value is going to shoot up ridiculously you're going to see these things on ebay for for quite a bit of money um but yeah, to just see that go, I, I, I'd actually, I don't know, I'd see that as quite disrespectful and quite 
just yeah i don't know and oh, like, yeah. like 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 you said it's it, it's history there's there, there's no reason why it can't be preserved um and sure like that might come at, a, at, at an expense to you but it, it's all about i don't know if you care about that generation of your company and 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 what you did um and what you provided to consumers during those generations and then you know you feel like you'd put in the time and the effort to try and keep that and it's almost like they're just like oh it's in the past we you know we don't care about that anymore you know we're only looking forward but it's just like i know you should care about how how your company and how these how these um games you know impacted that that time that time era and stuff like that but Mm -hmm. i don't know it's yeah I'm I'm not too happy with that. I think I think that's it's 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 a little bit lame. It's problematic. It really is. I mean, I mean, this is Sony have had a bit of a PR problem with compatibility, obviously, because they um their because their messaging has just been all over the place. Generally, they've been quite against it. And I mean, we'll get I'll get on to bloody Nintendo. Don't even get me started. But like, you know, um, they obviously had the thing at the beginning of the generation where they their messaging was like, oh, we're all about next gen. You know, we're just going to make games purely for next gen. And then, you know, Microsoft said the opposite. And they said, well, we're gonna actually going to be doing cross platform for about one to two years. And Xbox took a lot of shit for that for a while. And then Sony, yeah. you know, when they came around and announced everything, they were like, oh, by the way, Miles Morales and Horizon Zero Dawn are both going to be cross cross gen. I think I think I think Ratchet and Clank is just next gen, and that's coming out obviously in, in a month or something. Um, but still, like beside the point, like two of their big exclusives were actually cross gen. So it's like, so there was a, not only is there a bit of mixed messaging there. Jim Ryan, the current CEO of PlayStation, he's um, he's bloody been on record uh, like in 2017 when it was a big thing for Xbox when they you know first announced this, but first announced the program. He went on record saying like, oh yeah, like I went back and played Gran Turismo on the PlayStation One and Two, and there's God, they just look so bad. Like who would want to play this? And like like Ugh. that's ad verbatim. Like that's what he said, and it's like you're a, like it's yeah, that, that sort of thing. Uncool. It's like Jesus. It's like you're a suit. It just makes you sound like such a suit, um, and it makes you very much appreciate when we get Phil Spencer on stage. But anyway, yeah, corporate bootlicking aside, I just feel like it's. That Sony have had like a bit of a bad history with with compatibility, and to see it culminate in this is it sucks. Like it, we shouldn't be doing this. Like it, we need to be a bit more progressive with how we think about games and how we preserve the medium. Yeah, no, I yeah, I I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, I'm completely on that side of the coin as well. Fantastic. So I mean, like I said, um, Nintendo are not exempt from this. Um, and and by the way, I know I'm racking a lot on every. I know this is an Xbox show, but I'm, I'm well aware Xbox has um other de- uh, weaknesses, but it's just not in this area. So just because I'm not ragging on Xbox as well doesn't mean that I, <laughs> that doesn't mean that I'm <laughs> yeah yeah you know giving Philly a, a, a foot rub. Um, but <laughs> well, this I'm week sure as well, <laughs> yeah, this week as well, um, I would love to. I think it was either announced or it's happened. It might have actually happened this week. Uh, do you remember that that tiny little game, Super Mario 3D All Stars? Mm, I do. Tiny I do remember game. it. Collection yeah, of, briefly. Of, of, of um, Mario 64, Mario Sunshine, and um, uh, Mario Galaxy. You could buy those three yeah. uh, with a really oh, lazy yeah, for, remaster for, on the Switch. Yeah, for a full price. For yeah. full price, do you remember that? Do you remember how they also said that the game will only be available for 12 months and then it's vanishing forever? No. Yeah, no, 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 no. Like, no, I do remember that. I'm saying, like, no, dot, 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 what's coming? (laughs) (laughs) Like, I do remember them saying that. Okay. Yeah, it's gone. Mario has been beheaded, decapitated, executed, drawn and quartered. Um, And it it drives me up the fucking wall because some part of me was like, they're not actually going to do it. They're not actually. I mean, these are shit ports anyway. They're really bad. And like, because I, I I bought it because um, my my partner Beth she she's never played any of those those older Mario games. We like, we like go through them together, and they are awful ports. Like I'm just gonna reinstate that. They're terrible. Like none of the controls have been updated. It looks like fine. It's like a HD. I don't know. It, they're fine. Um, and they fuck. They're gone now. Like you can't play those games anymore. Like unless you have them. Unless you have them physically. Like you can't get you. them anywhere. You literally cannot get them anywhere, and that's it's just so crazy to me. Like it's the scummiest piece of shit thing. I I like Nintendo do a lot of piece of shit scummy things, but this is like real top of the top of the board. Like why? Like have you like no? I can't think of that ever happening before. They just created like artificial scarcity. You know, it's like this game's gonna be around for twelve months. Get it while it's hot because it's fucking dead after that. 
It's why? It why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it may. It makes no sense, especially considering it's it's digital. It's exactly digitally. It's not like it expires or they just like we run out of codes. Yeah. So that's not a thing. Like it, they just chose to just axe it for for no reason for for nostalgia's sake. But I don't know. I feel like Nintendo are like that though. They 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 know they've got a lot of people that are like uh, collection fanboys that like to collect all their limited edition figurines and uh, not figurines controllers and amiibos and consoles and games they know they have such a large fan base like that yeah. so this sort of stuff appeals to them and they can get away with it um pe- people are just like oh you should have got it i'm one of the few that actually did it but it's just like just leave it on <laughs> like you're just gonna get people will just buy it later down the line why why would exactly. you why would you take it away and reduce sales? <laughs> I don't understand. I don't yeah, it, it just makes for the me... novelty sake of 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 just doing this, creating like a fake. Um, yeah, it's scarcity. It's fake scarcity. Yeah, it's yeah, exactly. Scarcity. It is. It's <laughs> like you said. It's just scummy. It's just it's not same, cool. It's the same thing that shops do when they say, you know, it's it's on sale for one week. I mean, I mean, I know we 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 all know what sales are, that, but they also, you know, when like a packet of crisps, they're like, oh, limited edition, you know, like you can only get this flavor for a month. Yeah. It's the but same that makes thing sense it's, because it's yeah. a physical production, and then they stop exactly. it. But <laughs> digitally, it makes no sense. It, it makes no <laughs> beyond it not making any fucking sense. Yeah, it, it eradicates the chance of you know like a future generation being able to get it because the games aren't going to be like they're in circulation the physical version sure but like they're not going to be able to play it unless they you know get get their hands on one of them which is just isn't happening so and it's it's, um it's stupid yeah mate you want to buy a copy of like uh wind waker or super mario sunshine for like the gamecube or something it's going to set you back hundreds of pounds yeah um well they're redoing um skyward sword aren't they they're doing a remake of skyward sword yeah, I did. Yeah, I did hear that. Yeah, they they announced that a while ago, didn't they? Yeah, um, I wouldn't be surprised if remake of if they did the same worst, thing. The worst yeah. Zelda game. The worst Zelda game. So. Whatever, because for whatever reason they want to preserve the Nintendo Wii saga, because everyone <laughs> loved the Wii. <laughs> yeah. Do you mean the Wii U? A Wii? Oh, was it Wii U? It was Wii U, wasn't it? Yeah, no, it yeah, wasn't. Yeah. No, Skyward Sword was just Wii. It, no, it came out on both, but it did come out on both, but it it it, it launched on the Wii with the remote mm. and you swung it like a sword didn't you that that was its thing maybe you, the we the we mote was the sword and you were like ha yeah this doesn't work <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bomb bowling actually. yeah it was definitely it launched on the wii and it got yeah so it must have got remark it must have got re-released for the wii u so they're re they're redoing it this is the third time they're doing mm. skyward sword it, on, on, on a different platform with like yeah. different Jesus, are they trying to follow in Skyrim's footsteps? <sighs> yeah, maybe. It's just it's that word, Sky, isn't it? If you put Sky yeah, in the game, it has to come out multiple times. <laughs> Skylanders, <laughs> fucking 10 years time, we'll see it. Skylanders yeah. 4K Ultra <laughs> Blammo Edition. Yeah, we've busted it wide open. It's the word <laughs> Sky. That's it. We've cracked it's the Sky Spiracy, yeah. Yeah, what else has oh, Sky in it? I'm going to think in the background while we move on to our next topic. So, yeah, that's that's our weekly rant, but it's, it's around that. And I think... Um, yeah, so I mean, uh, kind of, I, I guess, coming on to like the nicer side of compatibility, um, this week it was also announced that um, obviously xCloud is a thing, it's in beta, um, and you can do it on, on your Android device. You've got an Android device, have you tried it? Uh, yeah, 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 I've tried it. Um, it's good. Cool. It works, sometimes. I am, um, I I really want uh, it to come to iOS and actually... That's something that Phil, uh, he just he just replied to someone. Someone said to him, iOS soon, question mark, on Twitter. And he just said, yes. <laughs> so I'm expecting to hear more about it soon because obviously they had the problem with Apple a while back because Apple wouldn't let them do it on their storefront. So they're going to have to do it through a browser. Mm. Um, well, that's the speculation anyway. So I'm hoping to hear more about that soon. But on the topic of xCloud, um, they announced this week that backwards compatibility is starting to make its way to, um, to xCloud because I think... Um, like it, you, it's not the same as remote play as far as I'm, uh, like aware. It's like some games work for XCloud at the moment because they have to like do it individually. Do you do, like? Yeah. Do you know how? Like, yeah, is that right? 
Yeah, yeah. It's like a there's like a separate library for for X Cloud, and then obviously right. the, there's the remote play, which it kind of just like emulates onto your phone, doesn't it, or mm. something? Yeah. Sure. Um, where yeah, with X Cloud, you you're like literally running it in the cloud, sort of similar, I guess, similar tech to like a Stadia or something. I would imagine yeah. like how Stadia works. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's only a few, there's only a handful of games on it at the moment. I can't remember which ones there was. I think I did like Forza, Forza Horizon, um, when I tested it out. Um, mm-hmm. I think, but yeah, yeah, that's the, that, that is basically how it works. You, you, you are right, yeah, it's cool, done cool, that cool, way. Cool. So, yeah, they're starting to bring some backwards compatible games to it as well, um, which is obviously very cool. Um, you know, the, the more the more the merrier with xCloud, so it will just be cool to see that. It's something that I'll use because I like being able to sort of um, play some games in different parts of the part of the house. And, and like my ideal loadout is being able to do it on my Mac. Um, so um, I'm looking forward to that. And hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully I get to do that soon. Yeah, that would be cool. Um. Cool. So we also had this week as well. We we spoke about this obviously last because it was it was early last week. Um, the Bang and Olufsen five hundred pound Xbox headset. Um, yeah. So this is so how's just, how's yeah. how's how's that doing? I know I I know that it. I know that some people actually like. I think the general consensus is it's pretty. It's good. It's it's very good, right? But I think it was missing some stuff which people were expecting to be there mm. especially for such a premium headset um yeah but yeah i mean i'm I'm always one for premium products but i don't think i'm going to spend 500 pounds on a headset but yeah no yeah well it's one of those i as far as i'm aware nobody actually has it in their hands yet like nobody's been able to do a preview but the model that it's based on is a model that's like already on shelves so like, because the one they've they've essentially you know slapped an Xbox logo on it and put a couple of extra features in and, and shipped it. Yeah. Out. So, uh, I think it's called the Bang and Olufsen Portal or something like that. I can't remember, but um, yeah, I was initially quite excited when I saw these. Um, I did. I mean, I wasn't quite expecting five hundred pounds. Um, obviously, <laughs> a big thing about them is that they're designed to be very sleek and you can kind of use them out, out and about as well. Um, and they look like you know they look like premium headsets. You know. That's kind of because a lot of gaming headsets, you know, let's face it, look like gaming headsets. They've got like yeah. vi- vibrant colors. They're a bit clunky and chunky. Um, yeah, yeah. Whereas these are very stylish, you know, they're very uh, easy on the eyes. So, yeah, the, the, the thing in terms of missing features, yeah, that there has been, and I don't think it's like been confirmed, confirmed yet, but there's some, the way that it's worded in the, um, in the manual, because people have access to manual online, um, is that you can connect. It has you. Can, it has Bluetooth, and that you can connect to your console like through Xbox's proprietary wireless. So not Bluetooth, but you can also connect via Bluetooth to um, yeah, you know your, your, your phone or whatever. Um, but you can't do both at the same time. That's what the language seems to indicate that you can't use dual Bluetooth. And this is like a big. I know this is. I've read on forums. I know this is a big selling point for a lot of people, and it is for me as well. My current headsets don't do this, and it's something that I regularly think I wish I could do. Um, mm. So it seems to be the case that like if you connect to your phone, it will go into you know quote unquote phone mode and automatically optimize the the sound output for that. And if you connect to the Xbox, it will optimize into gaming mode. And there are loads of presets and wonderful nice things you can do with it. Um, and it generally looks like a good headset but it's, it's just like i would be considering it if it had that feature I, w- I would be considering it maybe not now but maybe you know in a, in a six months um time or whatever uh but without that it's absolutely not like absolutely not like you know the xbox wireless headset that came out the other week um has it has that as well exactly and it's just like I, is this an oversight or is this by design like what's going on here so yeah i don't know it's it's a weird one um and yeah you, you you're dumping you're dumping a lot of dosh on on that that's crazy yeah. it's the same price i know it's probably been said as clickbait everywhere but it's the same price as a bloody console more more in fact um yeah. and you just you just kind of expect everything like you expect it to have you know these somewhat necessary features to a lot of people it's not like it's uh it's a it's a not well known thing uh, mm-hmm. a, a not well known feature you know it's quite a common one that people look for 
uh, to not have that in one of the most expensive headsets on the market almost is, yeah, it, that kind of sucks. And I mean, just dual Bluetooth is nice. I mean, I have it on, on these that I'm using at the moment um, and it's, it, it's great, but like, it's just, yeah, I don't know. It's just, just for the sake of, even if you'd use dual Bluetooth or not, just for the fact that you know it's not there, I feel like that in itself just, it, it doesn't justify that price tag um yeah but yeah i don't know i i, I don't think I'd, I'd get it even even if it had it to be <clears> honest <throat> it's just a little bit too much like i feel like you can i'm quite happy having one of these gaming headsets getting like an astro for like you know the two to three hundred mark and that fulfilling everything i need gaming wise and then having yeah. a different headset for for, for for other things um so yeah, I don't think it is. It's never really something I would go for. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I guess I think it's. I guess it's important to note as well that like presumably the audio quality will be sublime. Like I'm assuming like the yes, audio will be yeah. like incredible. Um, I'm not an audio nerd either. I, I'm not like I'm not like crazy into it. Oh, sorry, yeah. I'm hiccuping all the time. <laughs> I'm not like crazy into it and know like all of the. Yeah, ins and outs of audio design and being like, oh, wow, this one is so much, you know, better. Um, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. But yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so I'll, I'll be keeping an eye on it. Uh, we'll see what happens as reviews come out and everything. But um, it, it seems like a bit of a peculiar thing um, to, to begin with. Uh, and some, to be fair, like I, I had a look and some of the features on there are really nice. You know, like it's um, there's like a touch panel on the bottom to adjust the volume and um there's like an app where you can go into different modes. Like there's an RPG mode, like presets and the first person shooter pre mode. So like some of those things are really nice, but yeah, with, with the emission of that dual Bluetooth and the asking price, it's kind of, it's going to, it's going to raise a few eyebrows. Um, so wait and see really. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I'm going to just do a sort of, um, lightning fire, um, drop of smaller bits of you. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to pew, pew, pew. Uh, through a few things um, and if there's anything that you kind of want to touch on uh, um, you can do so so uh, we had it takes two come out this week earlier this week um, to 88 on open critic um, that this was the same guys who made um, a way out and it was kind of that co-op game um, and I don't know if you remember it takes two but it's kind of like two little like fabric looking dolls and nobody was expecting it to do as well as it did but it's done really uh, fucking yeah. well um, there is nice. uh, Alan Wake 2 is rumoured to be uh, in development with Epic Games as the publisher, annoyingly enough, because uh, Remedy own the Alan Wake, uh, the Alan Wake IP. Um, so if Alan Wake 2, if this is real and Alan Wake 2 is being made, it won't be seeing Xbox. It will be exclusive to the Epic Games storefront. That's if annoying. it is true, I like Alan yeah, Wake. Yeah, me too. If it's true and it is being made, um, then I'm glad it is being. It's going to see the light of day. Uh, but it's a bit annoying that it's going to be stuck to Epic Games. So. You know, is yeah. what it is. Mm -hmm. um, we had um, Watch Dogs Legion 60 frames per second update is going to be inbound for the next gen consoles. It's in the works. There's no date, but it is in the works. Uh, Elder Scrolls Online is to be optimized for the Xbox Series X and S. Uh, no mention of the PS5, I don't think, actually. Uh, but that's on June the 8th. Um, so those are things that are kind of lined up. Any thoughts? Okay uh yeah i mean the the watchdogs legion 60 fps will be awesome like i feel like that game looks pretty fantastic um as is from the sort of gameplay i've seen on that mm -hmm. um so that would be really crispy to see that running at 60 um and also i've actually seen that on offer at the moment i think that's on like an easter offer at the moment for like almost 50 percent off or something oh the spring the spring that, sale mm. yeah yeah so that actually might be worth a that might be worth a cheeky little pickup, but I'm not really sure if it if it has any plans or if he's been hinted at potential games pass anytime soon or something. Um, mm. Otherwise, you know, with it, it, it did look like quite a fun game. That's uh, that's yeah, actually yeah. kind of piqued my interest seeing that update around the corner. And then, well, actually, you said no day. It's it, it's in the works, but. Mm -hmm. um you know pick, picking it up cheap and just sort of saving it for for that point even though i'm sure they might put it on offer for that the, the sort of time period that they come down anyway um, yeah and they just announced the yeah that's cool. mode as well okay did they i haven't actually yeah. looked at that 
Yeah, I think I sent you it. I think I um, sent you something a few weeks back. I think they released like a, a multiplayer kind of thing. It's not like PvP. It's like, a, uh, you know, a co-op type experience. I'm not exactly sure how it works. I, I get the feeling it's kind of there are fixed missions that you can kind of do together. Uh, but apparently it's quite okay. good. Like I, I watched IGN's pre, uh, preview on it and it seemed quite positive. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it just cool. seems kind of cool. Yeah, it's always piqued my interest that game. I've I've played the previous Watch Dogs and and liked them. I always felt like I always felt like I needed to give them a little bit more love as well. Like I I, I do feel like they're probably better than the attention and time I gave them. Um, yeah, the IP just just can't seem to find its footing. It just can't take off, like sales wise and like critical reception wise. Like it's always, I think Watch just, Dogs too like hit the eighties, didn't it? But it just it has never taken off like it. Yeah, it's just behind GTA, isn't it? It's just it's just so much of a mountain to climb to be seen over yeah, GTA. Um, but yeah, no, that's pretty cool. Uh, Elder Scrolls Online optimized. That's cool. I've, I've played my fair share of Elder Scrolls Online. That's that's pretty cool. I'm assuming optimized will be just your you, your 60 your normal 60 higher textures sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool, and that's that's very soon as well. It's June 8th. That's um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's nice. I'm sure, I'm sure uh, a lot of people, especially with it being sort of, I guess probably one of the only sort of console games of that sort of genre, or at least one of the best ones. Um, it's pretty cool to see that being being optimized and running well. I'm sure a lot of people will be happy with that. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, no, it's cool. I like that. We're good. Um, and there was um, a like a I don't really know what you call it. Apparently, it's something Twitter do regularly. Um, but there was like a, a like voting competition um, between Xbox and Skittles. Did you see this at all? <laughs> I did not see this. What are you talking about? What's so, happening? Like, uh, Skittles are like uh, Skittle Twitter hosts this like um, brand war kind of thing, apparently. So I hear, and I, I don't know if this is regular, or if this is the first one or whatever. Um, but basically, you know, Twitter said, you know, you've got seventy-two hours to vote for your favorite brand, uh, Xbox or Skittles. And as it was going on, you know, people were voting, and it was kind of neck and neck throughout. Um, and as it was going, Skittles chirped in and said look if we win this we're going to bring bring back the lime green skittle <laughs> it was oh just really fucking funny. and then after that like two days later like skittles were starting to pull ahead and xbox said look if we win this we're going to start putting um the xbox series x mini fridges into production <laughs> oh no <laughs> so the day came the final results came in and xbox pulled ahead by one percent so there are real oh, life nice. Series X mini fridges going into production now. <laughs> they probably won that's, and they're like, oh fuck. <laughs> like we that's have to make... really cool. That's cool, man. Yeah. I I wonder if it will be like a very limited stock sort of thing, because that'd be cool. I'd I'd be game for buying one of those mini fridges. Yeah. Like for sure. That's 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 really funny though. I like that. Yeah. It's oh, just kind of this great. this is there's this kind of funny like culture evolving around like Twitter and brands, you know, it's like brand tur, you know, like banter. And it's like, and this happens a lot between like the Xbox, um, like Twitter, you know, they're like really good at what they do. They're always putting funny stuff up and original content yeah. and they're having like banter with other, like, you know, Square Enix and whatever and PlayStation. But, um, and a lot of people out there are like quite cynical about this sort of stuff. Like, oh, they're just trying to get you to do this so you can spend more money. And it's like, oh, fucking <laughs> hell. Like, have some fun. <laughs> Take yeah, that giant yeah. stick out your ass. Like, for God's <laughs> sake. Like, yeah, it's just so yeah, hard to handle sure. it. Such negativity. But like, yeah, anyway, so a bit of, it was a bit of fun. And obviously, I'm sure they probably had, like, maybe... Like this, I'm sure they had like these sorts of things already, like in production or whatever, and they just decided they can use it as leverage for the whole Twitter thing. Yeah, think, but, yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, there's no way Phil just snapped his fingers and were like, "Right, everybody, I know you're talking about the next Xbox, but drop that. We're doing the next fridge." Yeah, um, Phil's just like, "We're not fucking losing the skills. I need to come up with something. <laughs> this is outrageous. Not. It'll come out yeah. of my own pocket if necessary." Yeah, Roundtree's fine, but Skittles, fuck no. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, that's that's, that's funny. That's a yeah. thing. That's a thing that happened. <laughs> but yeah, good stuff. Um, and I guess sort of as we're coming to the end of the show today, um, just one last thing to re- report on. We've um, we've been speaking for a few weeks about this um, elusive uh, Xbox show 
titled quote unquote what's new in gaming or what's next for gaming or whatever and originally it was thought and it was rumored that the id at xbox twitch showing that happened um last month was going to be that show but it obviously ended up being the id at xbox um now it's been reported um by two microsoft reporters i think one of them was just reporting on the other, but uh, it comes from uh, Mary Jo Foley, who's a Microsoft reporter. Apparently, that there is a new um, conference coming this month in April, um, and this doesn't include the already announced Age of Empires um, showing on the tenth. So we've got Age of Empires coming up on the tenth, so next week, um, and supposedly there's something else coming this month. So I mean, nothing else really, just not much to say about it. But I mean. It doesn't surprise me, you know, that the uh, Xbox seem to be getting into this cadence of like, oh, here's a Games Pass bomb drop, here's a software bomb drop, here's this, here's that, and you know they're building yeah. up to this kind of E three showing where they just they they're they're really um, dominating the news cycle at the moment. They they can't put a foot wrong with any of this. Um, it seems uh, at the moment, which is you know really nice to see. It's just it's just exciting, man, because there's always something around the corner for them to be talking about. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I, 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 I agree. I feel like there's always something, yeah, just very close by. Um, there's always something, there's always a little fishing rod out with a with a little bit of bait on. Just, Absolutely. Just for us to bite on. Um, yeah. yeah, that's cool. That's, that, that's, that's, that's very exciting. Yeah, it'd be cool to find out, you know, eventually what that is. That's, uh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. It is a, it's a bit of a question mark. I mean, a lot of people seem to think it's going to be a lot of big updates on xCloud because it, it doesn't sound like, you know, with the title of what's next for gaming, it, it sounds more like a software and hardware thing. And <clears throat> I think we've touched on this in, in a previous episode, but um, yeah, like I said, it's just, it's still kind of this cadence and build up to that kind of an E3 showing that, that usually typically, typically happens in, in May or June and maybe early July. So um, yeah. Mm. Nice. Yeah, more exciting stuff. So, I mean, what are we on today? We're recording this as of April the fifth. So, yeah, when we record next week, um, hopefully we'll have more to talk about with the Age of Empires. I'm still really, really hoping that something gets announced for Xbox. So, I'll be really grumpy next week if that hasn't happened. <laughs> um, yeah. But we'll uh, <laughs> we'll we'll report on that when it when it happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking forward to it. All right, fantastic. So. Uh, anything you want to um, sort of touch on before we wrap up for the day then? Uh, no, not really. Uh, apart from just, you know, uh, apologies for being slightly late and, um, you know, and hope everyone had a lovely, a lovely Easter, you know, and it's been a pleasure talking with you yeah. again. And I uh, yeah. really fucking fat. Yeah, I did eat quite a lot of chocolate actually, which is surprising because I don't know if you know me, but I'm not the biggest chocolate fan. But that is surprising. I did, I did indulge quite a I bit. Do, I do have this image of you kind of just like stuffing your face with chocolate in the corner. Like, when can I go back to my Xbox? Yeah. <laughs> They're like, another board game. I'm like, more <laughs> chocolate then. <laughs> like, usually people drink good. in this sort of scenario, and here you are just on your fifth. Oh, I was drinking tea. I think I'll be wrong. You have to wash it out with something. Oh, yeah. Well, of course, of course. Yeah. 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 Um, well, wonderful. No, I mean, that's that's, yeah. that's all for us today. Um, yep. Thanks for joining uh, us this week. Um, we will be back. Uh, we'll be back next week, hopefully at a more normal time, um, uh, early weekend. Uh, but yeah. we'll um, follow us on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just got to plug that. And um, yeah, we'll catch you all later. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>